Hi there, Jeremy Hockman, co-founder of Megapixel. We're here at Display Week in uh, sunny San Jose. Uh, we love this show because we get to talk to a lot of people that actually engineer displays uh, and do really uh, interesting things with us. Um, so we're showing off today our Ventana platform. Uh, this is an incredibly thin digital tile. Uh, we use this to kind of blend uh, architectural spaces, the physical and digital world uh, together. No other micro LED or display tile for that matter uh, has been done in such a compact package. And so this is something that an architect can really uh, sink their teeth into and use uh, in any kind of public space or a home and think of it really like a building material. Uh, so we're really, really excited about this. We're showing off here uh, for this particular audience, uh, for the first time, they're able to see two different surface finishes. Uh, we have liquid black, which is a very high contrast, high dynamic range uh, that is a little bit reflective. And then on the right-hand side, we've got our matte, which is very, very dark ultra uh, matte view. So you can see a little bit of the difference there. But we now give a choice for a large format display what the surface uh, looks like. Um, so this is really important for the market because up until now, you've not had that choice. Um, in addition to the tiles like this, we also build a lot of processing uh, that goes into our own displays, but also into third-party displays. And so we have a few of the components here uh, that we're showing off. Some of the vendors that are at this show also OEM uh, this equipment, but we have everything from 100 gig direct fiber uh, input to the display. Uh, to Thunderbolt, to DisplayPort, HDMI, etc. So we have all these flavors. And then uh, in this industry, a lot of people call um, this front board. For us, this is called PX1. It's a tile side processor. Uh, so this is actually doing all the processing, color space conversion, calibration, handling of metadata uh, for the LED tiles. In LCD and OLED uh, industries, this would be called a TCON. Uh, so this is a very important uh, piece of uh, technology for us. And this runs our OS and software stack that's very specific to LED and uh, micro LED. Uh, we were fortunate enough uh, earlier today to be invited to um, an XR panel and we were able to speak uh, together with uh, a lot of technology thought leaders thinking about XR, but not only XR for uh, for us, large venues and, and virtual production that we do and live events, but also uh, as it relates to uh, wearables and headsets. And so we expect to see a lot of interesting conversion where, um, uh, or convergence rather, where an AR headset wearer can experience something very special when they walk up to the display. And so again, further melding this digital and, and virtual uh, together and, and physical spaces so that we can have these shared experiences so they're not just singular uh, people experiencing something on their own, but it's actually everybody in the environment uh, able to share something. So, so the immersive experience can happen with the headset, but it can also happen with a huge display that covers your whole yeah, field of exa view. Yeah, right? that's exactly right. And that's exactly right. So where we come into play is that large format where the display is so large when you walk into a space that it completely fills your field of view. Uh, and so the same way that you would put on VR goggles uh, and that's filling your field of view, you can actually get that in a physical space. And that can be floor, walls, ceiling, and everything. So you're in that immersive environment. And you can be in that environment with many people at the same time, of course, because it's a physical room. Is the maximum configuration of tiles that you have is like the, what you showed at CES, the 16 by 8? Or do you That's have a good even question. more? We have even more. So uh, we've done applications that are even thousands of tiles in size. Uh, and so really size is not a limit. Uh, one of the specialty things about all of the processing equipment that we make is that we support up to 100 gigs of bandwidth. Uh, and so that's an enormous pixel capacity and allows literally shape and size to be uh, anything anybody wants. And we're not resolution uh, limited. So uh, hopefully if these experiences become available in more and more places, there's mm -hmm. more and more people who can get immersed in this uh, giant entertainment and the big uh, immersive experience all over the world. Yes. Yeah, and we, we see this not only for single spaces, but multiple spaces that can be in different places of the world. So uh, with the micro LED product, this is called Ventana, which means window. And we literally see it as a window into a digital world or a window into another location. So you can imagine a display that maybe is in your home in the living room, and you can have an enormous window into another uh, family or your family's 
uh, other living room that might be in another country or even across the street. And so making this bond uh, through this digital world for us is, uh, is really interesting. And we're very excited to see where the software applications and other accessories come into play on top of this technology to really turn it into something uh, more ubiquitous and, and uh, available everywhere. One thing I thought I saw I thought about when I saw the last uh, uh, display at, in London that I uh, that you were showing off is that there could be in theory video conferencing uh, where the other person is at life size uh, yes. on the other side uh, and where you get the whole room still and it's su such an immersive experience and uh, it's going to happen right where people they it become, absolutely they're going to be transported to another world or it to absolutely another place. it absolutely will and in this large form factor having people or objects that you're, that you're looking at and interacting with uh, or just you know, watching be, be life-size is, is super incredible. I mean, you know, very simple example is like watching a basketball game on one of these mega-sized displays. Having the basketball player actually life-size like you would see if you were right there at the court is, is just amazing. It's an experience that does not translate through a television today. You, you kind of have to need to have another uh, uh, lens and another angle to capture the moment uh, in appropriate. You know what I mean, like life-size people angle, kind of. Yeah. To have so, that kind of view. Yeah, that's there is. It's not necessarily the same that's being broadcast on normal TVs right now, where that's a very they yeah. zoom in on people's faces. You don't want to see a, a three-meter-high face. No, that's a very good point. Yeah, we don't want a three-meter-high face. So there there absolutely will be opportunity to kind of meld, knowing that there's this type of technology there for the consumption, uh, the recording technology will be different. There will be multiple broadcasts meant for different uh, types of viewing consumption. Today, we sometimes see, and again, this is a simplified version, but many times if you tune in to watch a, a sports um, a ball game, there might be three or four different camera views that are on three or four different channels. And so if you like the wide view, you can watch a specific channel and have commentary and you can see something that's maybe a little bit more cut together on another channel, but it's of the same sporting event. And so we anticipate that we'll see this type of creativity in the content creation put into the broadcast as well. Uh, and then that would allow you to pick and choose and you know maybe even further, if that broadcast has the right metadata with it, the display itself can choose the right feed knowing how large it is and how, where it is in a room. And uh, maybe Formula One, you could have the more like a uh, different kind of life size. You see the cars racing around. E exactly, you may want that life size or you may want the in-camera, the in-car camera so that you're sitting on your couch and it feels like you're in the F1 car uh, driving and everything could be life size. So it, it's really interesting because it pulls together these different aspects of, you know, why do we like to watch these things? It's for entertainment and engagement, right? And the engagement now has the ability to be uh, more things, right? It's not just something that we sit and watch whatever a, uh, you know, one stream, right? We can now pick and choose and be able to enjoy the things that we like. Uh, and again, as I said before, there's more creative opportunity for the director of a show or, or the director of a movie to do something that's just more unique for that viewing application. In terms of uh, not getting uh, uh, too much brightness in the room or too, mm -hmm. like, uh, too much action, you could also have art that's more static and that doesn't yes. do any kind of like, you know, like getting, giving you a headache if it stays on the whole day and you're in the same room. That's it needs exactly to be, right. It needs to be the right kind of content and, and this technology is suitable to... It absolutely is. The, the display, and especially for that kind of application, the, uh, the ultra matte finish that we have is wonderful for art. And I can imagine somebody putting up on a 20 foot wall, uh, let's say an image of the Sistine Chapel, right? And it's like they're the in, uh, inside there and we don't have fast motion and moving graphics. It's just the image of, of feeling like you're sitting there but maybe the sunlight is coming through the stained glass windows and changing throughout the day. So there is some movement and, and some realism there, but it's not constantly moving and changing. And this is the thing that we feel like is gonna be really interesting uh, as these content opportunities come up. There's a, there's a world of content out there that nobody's dreamed of yet. And we're hoping to just provide the canvas for it. We don't wanna dictate what goes on the wall. We wanna help uh, make the technology and the architecture kind of 
blend away and disappear into the background so that the content really can, can shine and do its thing. So was there a lot of people at the presentation, at the, the panel? Yes, we had a, the panel today was, was specifically on the future of XR uh, technology and uh, uh, kind of where it's going in the next one to five years. Uh, and it was standing room only uh, towards the end of it. So it was, it was really fun to get uh, such an enormous uh, feedback from everybody really interested in this topic. So is one thing that you do is to reach out to the display industry and uh, mm -hmm. look for collaborations. And what kind of collaboration are you looking for? Uh, that's a good question. We, we look all over the place. Uh, content is one, uh, so just beautiful imagery to be able to put onto the displays that make you feel like you're in different environments. Um, we were talking to uh, some other people earlier during the show for telepresence, and again, not specifically for like replacing Zoom, but just being able to feel like you're present with, uh, with other uh, spaces. And then again, I think the, the interaction between wearables and technology that we have in our pocket uh, and, and being able to interact in a space is, is starting to become uh, really interesting. So, you know, you can imagine if you're wearing glasses that also have AI built into them and there's cameras and head tracking and it knows where you're looking, uh, those devices can start to inform the content. So if I walk into a room that has Ventana all over the place and it feels like I'm walking into a forest, I want to be able to move my head and look around the tree and see a squirrel going up the back of the tree or something. And with some of the wearable technology, and as there's more interoperability between the, uh, the data sets that are actually driving content into uh, like a HUD display, but also into the Ventana product, uh, they can start to interact in these ways, and it'll be really interesting. And I, I, I guess you have all the connections with the whole industry in terms of uh, the latest developments to help you get the uh, mass production smooth and cost down and any kind of innovation that can help in the micro LED space is useful for you to, oh, to collaborate, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we've designed that product from the ground up to be a very uh, vertically integrated product and very consolidated so that we're absolutely getting the best uh, image quality out of every single component that goes in and we control the hardware stack, the software, the, the OS uh, underlying and all of the commands and control protocols. But at the same time, because we supply our processing to third parties, uh, right now we, we supply about 30 different display manufacturers, uh, we all work together and improvements that we make, uh, we, we start to sometimes see them incorporate into their products. Uh, but then likewise, we get to benefit and, and uh, you know, learn from them as well. So the whole industry is, is learning and, and there's that saying, um, uh, you know, rising tides lift all boats. Uh, and we feel like there's really a special moment in time right now for micro LED, uh, that the whole industry is, is improving and doing interesting things. And that's ultimately that's going to benefit the consumer. Is there something to, is it, is it how it works that the patents kind of like open up and other people can license them and if there's some new stuff, other people can use it and improve their process and stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. Like on the processing side, we have about 50 patents that covers uh, what we do and we regularly license out a lot of these things. And so whether that's a one-time use license or whether that's another hardware manufacturer wanting to incorporate some of that technology, uh, again, we kind of, we all share in these things and, and want the technology to be as pervasive as possible. So. Um, I, I don't think uh, most of the companies in this room, and, and us in particular, um, we're always uh, needing patents to protect what we do, um, but at the same time, we like to use them um, to, uh, you know, we put our ideas down on paper, but we want other people to license them as well because it's important to have more of the industry using this technology. Sometimes companies trade a little bit, like uh, you can use mine, I use yours, and yeah, then exactly. both improve. Yep, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. I'm looking forward to uh, all of the world getting a lot of huge displays. Me too. One one wall at a time. We'll uh, we'll cover the world in pixels. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having us on the channel.